demo time. So um, what I'm going to be showing you today is how easy it is now to set up SSH authentication for Git. And then I'll show how to use the agent to SSH into VMs. And I'm, I'll be using DigitalOcean droplets as an example. And then I'll show how to how you can integrate the one password developer tools in a local development workflow. So I just set up a new machine. And yeah, I'd like to continue working on my project that's on GitHub. But yeah, it's a private project. And I want to clone this now to start developing on it. So I'm going to click the uh, SSH URL and I'm going to clone it now. The only problem is I don't have any SSH keys on my uh, on my new laptop. So I also don't have them on GitHub. So if I now try to clone this, it's not going to work, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head over to the GitHub SSH key settings. And it's telling me about a guide that I can follow. And actually, it's a whole guide portal that explains me everything about SSH, about OpenSSH, SSH key gen, the OpenSSH SSH agent, and uh, SSH add. Um, but luckily, today, we don't have to do that anymore. We can now go straight to new SSH key. And because I have the 1Password browser extension installed, there's now a 1Password logo uh, on the uh, text box. And it's giving me the option to create an SSH key right from the browser. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to give it a name, webinar key. And I can select the key type here. So it's, I can uh, create an ED25519 key or an RSA key. And I can also change the bit length. And because not everyone knows the difference between those, the differences between those keys, we have a little explanation here to uh, help you make the, the right decision. Um, so I'm going to go with ED25519 here because yeah, hey, it's the, the fastest, the most modern standard. And if I now click create and fill, what, what will happen is it will generate an ED25519 key on the fly. And it will then save it in my private vault here on 1Password. And it's gonna also derive the public key and auto fill that into the text box. So let's see that in action. So here we are. So the public key is now in the uh, text box. Also, it also filled in the title. I'm gonna click add SSH key. And now it's here on GitHub, but it's also on one password. So if I use quick access now to uh, and type in webinar key. So here you can see the key that just got created as well as some shortcuts to easily copy the public key or the fingerprint um, or even show the item here in a new window, the fingerprint, the public key, the private key, and the key type. And it's also here in one password. So now if I go back to my terminal um, and I run the clone command again, it uh, it will try to talk to the one password agent because the key didn't just get added to my vault and to my uh, GitHub. It also got added in a third place and that's the one password SSH agent. And that happened automatically. Um, so now if I run this command, it will talk to the SSH agent and it will try to use that key. But notice I said try um, because unlike the standard open SSH agent, which basically gives every process on your system um, blanket approval to use any key in any way it likes, the 1Password SSH agent will always ask for your consent first. And it does that through a biometric. So because I'm on Mac OS, that's, uh, that's Touch ID. Um, I can also use it with, with Apple Watch or on Windows with Windows Hello, on Linux with, with Polkit. And we'll, we'll ask for my consent first. So let's see what that, what that looks like. So if I run this command, it says here, 1Password is trying to allow item2, because that's my, my terminal, to use the webinar key. So I'm going to put my finger on the fingerprint reader. And now the uh, and that way I I approved this this uh, SSH request and now I can successfully clone, um, but I didn't just approve a one-off SSH command. There's actually now a, a session established between this terminal window and my SSH key that's uh, that's stored on one password. Um, so that means that now the next command does not need my consent again because I already gave it. So if I now um, CD into that directory and I try to run git fetch, for example, I don't need to approve that again because I already did that. But that's only for this terminal window. So if I now open VS Code, for example, that's a different environment. So if I open terminal here and here I run git fetch, that's 
a different environment. So it's going to ask me, but now the same question, but now for VS Code. So I can I will also allow this, and I can now run git fetch again. Um, so yeah, now you've seen how, how it works with Git. Uh, and I'm also going to show you how you can use the agent for SSHing into a VM. I'm going to go to DigitalOcean, going to create a droplet here. Going to go with Ubuntu, basic settings, um, New York. And here I'm going to, for authentication, I'm going to select SSH keys and I'm going to register a new SSH key. And this time I'm going to pick the one that I already created, the webinar key. Click OK to autofill. Also, again, filled in the name. I'm gonna click Add. And now I'm gonna, yeah, let's give it a name, demo droplet. And I'm gonna create the droplet. And now for this demo, I'm not gonna use the vanilla uh, SSH CLI. But instead, I'm gonna show you how, you how how you can use it in a local uh, Terraform workflow. So I have a simple Terraform project here which um, uh, manages a digital ocean droplet and it prints the, the IP of the droplet that gets created. And it then uses an SSH provisioner. And it's very simple. All it does, it, it creates a file on the, on the host at this path. Um, and that's a JSON file, uh, change the message here. And then it runs uh, through SSH a few commands to prove that SSH works. So let's go back to my droplet and it successfully created it. So yeah, now enough with the GUIs. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna continue in Terraform now. So I'm gonna copy the droplet ID and now I'm gonna transfer ownership to my, uh, to my Terraform project. So I'm gonna use Terraform import here, digital ocean, paste in the droplet ID. Okay, and now I will use, I will run Terraform apply, which will run my provisioners using SSH. I'm gonna confirm, yes. And now it's gonna try to SSH into the machine and I'm gonna confirm that. And now it, it's connecting to the host using the SSH agent and it's printing out my commands. Um, and now again, yeah, session got created here. So I, I can now just run Terraform refresh and I don't have to authorize again. And um, to confirm that the file actually successfully got there, I'm also gonna use yet another yet another SSH client. And this, and this time I'm gonna use a GUI application, transmit to SFTP into the server. Gonna click connect, paste in the IP gonna accept the host key first, and now it's gonna talk to the agent, but now it's saying transmit. I'm gonna approve that again, and now transmit can SFTP into my server, and here's the file that I just created with the message. So now you've seen how to use SSH with uh, the one password SSH agent using a bunch of different SSH clients. But what they all have in common is that none of these clients will ever be able to, to, to see the private key because the private key never leaves the one password process. Um, so that means no more SSH keys on disk. Also here, still no SSH keys, it's very clean, just the config and the known hosts. So that was SSH keys, but if you're a developer like I am, then you know that SSH keys are not the only um, keys and secrets on your uh, on your local disk. Um, for example, for this exact Terraform project to work, mm, it needs to talk to DigitalOcean. And for that, I need a DigitalOcean access token. And this is not a, just a DigitalOcean or a Terraform thing. It's basically any developer platform or, or, or SaaS that, I, that I'm trying to incorporate in my local workflows there is some secret that I need to, to authenticate there. And that's usually um, more often than not on my, on my local disk. And uh, in this case, I have my digital ocean access token in a, uh, in a dot file. Um, it can be in any config file. And yeah, that's now sitting on disk. And that sucks because 
first of all, it's a plain text secret that's, secret that's now on disk, but also I now cannot sync or, or my, my dot files or my, and my config files. Um, or yeah, because I'd, I'd like to sync them with my other machines, maybe even share some of them with my colleagues. Um, some people even open source them. And that's now not possible because there's, there's, there's a hard coded uh, secret in there. So it's basically those secrets are holding my super awesome configuration hostage. Uh, because the whole file is now sensitive. So let's get rid of that. So I'm going to first unset the plain text secret, digital ocean access token. And I have the secret stored here in one password in my dev vault. So it's a vault called dev, an item called digital ocean, and here it is, the access token. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the one password CLI version two, which introduced the new secrets provision provisioning features that Tyler just mentioned. And um, I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to go back to where I configured the digital ocean access token. But now instead of pasting in the plain text value, I'm going to use a reference. So I'm, I'm replacing those that plain text value with a reference to the secret. And you can use those references using a special syntax. And that starts with op colon slash slash. And after that, you can enter the vault name, which was dev in my case, and then the item name, digital ocean, and then the field name, which was access token. Yes, access token. Um, but now, um, yeah, so now I'm gonna rerun my Terraform command. So I'm gonna, uh, but now I'm gonna wrap it in a new command called op run, which is new in the one password CLI version two. So I'm gonna do Terraform refresh here. Um, and what this will do is it will scan the environment for those, those secret references. And it will then, um, if it, and it, it will then replace the, uh, it will inject the, the, the plain text values, but only at runtime, only when this command runs. And when it ends, the secrets are wiped. So let's uh, see that in action. But oh yeah, first, it's also good to, to note the, um, the uh, OP CLI doesn't, by itself does not have any bootstrap secret or any authentication uh, secret um, that's, that's, that's stored on my disk. Instead, simply because I have the one password desktop app installed, the CLI um, can connect to that and um, uh, authenticate without having to, to uh, have yet another secret sitting there in between uh, using, you guessed it, the biometric unlock. So let's, let's see that in action. So again, it's gonna ask for permission. This looks very similar to the SSH prompt, but now it's for the CLI, for CLI access to my account. So I'm gonna approve that. And now it's loading the digital ocean uh, access token from my one password vault. And it's uh, replacing the reference with the uh, actual secret and passing that to Terraform, which now succeeds. Um, So yeah, and, and, and now the secret is wiped. So if I, if I now echo the digital ocean access token again, I can just do that because it's not sensitive. It's just a reference. It's only during uh, the time that this command is running that the, the real sensitive value is, is in there. Um, and again, I can rerun this without the prompt because this shell is now connected to um, my 1Password app. Um, but there's a, yeah, there's another feature next to biometrics that we've taken from the desktop app to the terminal, because now I can just show you the desktop app, even just screen share it, um, without being worried that I'm leaking any sensitive information. And that's because these, the sensitive part is concealed here until I explicitly tell it to reveal, which I'm not going to do obviously right now. Um, and now, now we, we've taken that same concept to the terminal as well. Because in OP Run, what OP Run will do is it will automatically conceal all the sensitive values. So if I now uh, print the digital ocean access token, uh, oops, I mean, grab. it says digital ocean access token 
concealed by one password. And then I can use the no masking flag to opt out of that. So that was OP run. Um, yeah, and I can already hear you thinking now that, okay, so wait, I now need to always remember to always wrap my Terraform commands with OP run. True, but luckily there's a good old uh, shell trick for this and that's called aliases. So if I use, this is a pretty, pretty nice pattern. I can say alias Terraform is OP run dash dash Terraform. And now I don't need to remember anymore that I need to wrap it with Terraform with OP run. I can just say Terraform refresh right now. And it works without me having to wrap it manually in OP run. And this is, and, and you can also set this, set this up globally because OP run will never get in your way. OP run will only show the biometrics metrics prompt uh, if it detects one or more uh, secret secret references. If there aren't any, then it will just uh, just run the command right away without doing anything else. So now you've seen how to use both the SSH agent and version two of the CLI in a local development workflow and all of that without having to keep a single secret on disk.